Welcome back to Week Talk and the continuing saga of the evolution of the Jelly Juice Protocol. In other words, Jillian's terrible, horrible excuse for a book. I really seriously wonder how Lulu, her publisher, could allow this garbage to be published. Now, I have no issue with freedom of speech, but I also believe in said consequences of that speech. Jillian's information is flat out incorrect, and following her advice can be detrimental. Lulu should be ashamed of providing a platform and publishing such. This is not a matter of opinion. This is not having a different view. I think I pretty clearly demonstrated, even just in this chapter, that Jillian's information is incorrect. It's not science. Enough said. To continue with Jillian's deceit concerning proteins. I can't, at this point, continue to call it a misunderstanding, as she has actively cherry-picked her source material and taken her source material completely out of context. Jillian has intentionally altered definitions or explanations of terms to suit her narrative, which is drink JJ. Now, bear in mind, up to this point, I haven't quite determined how this misinformation is relevant to her concoction or consuming JJ. I think what we're seeing in this book and especially on uh, her Facebook postings and various videos, I believe we're, what we're seeing is a very desperate woman who has invested at least three and a half years of her life attempting to defend her delusion. So to begin with, she hijacks a, I'll call it a primer chart, of the basic functions of proteins. She does remain true to the information presented in this chart, but she follows with this, quote, While proteins are what make up cells in DNA and RNA, the amount of proteins from viruses, fungi, bacteria, protozoa, and parasites is what triggers imbalances causing infection, triggering antibody proteins to keep the balance. Eventually, antibodies agglutinate, causing reinfection within the body. Let's break this down. Okay, her first line, her first silence. While proteins are what make up cells and DNA and RNA. We have already demonstrated her notion of proteins from earlier in the chapter has been shown to be incorrect. Simply put, DNA contains the information the cell requires to synthesize protein and to replicate itself. RNA translates a gene's message into a protein's amino acid sequence. So basically, DNA to RNA to protein. So no, proteins don't make up DNA and RNA. Not even close. Proteins are the final result of DNA and RNA doing their thing. Second, she goes on to say, The amount of proteins from viruses, fungi, bacteria, protozoa, and parasites are what triggers imbalances causing infection, triggering antibody proteins to keep the balance. Now, this is going to get a little hinky. Because I think what she's presenting 
is a bastardization of what appears to be the Freon hypothesis or the Freon theory of disease. Quote, Take anything you learned about genetics in high school and throw it out the door. Incredibly, we may have to do so as we come to understanding the prion theory of disease, suggested to explain mad cow and other related diseases. Prions are an earth-shaking idea casting doubt on the status of DNA and RNA as the molecules of life. Not a bacteria, not a fungus, not a virus, but a protein. The prion is a novel infectious agent. The theory that a protein, a non-living object, can propagate disease has become a lightning rod for controversy and has made the prion hypothesis one of the most hotly contested issues in molecular biology. End quote. Now, bear in mind, this is a really, really big assumption on my part. As Jillian removes so much context to what she presents, I don't know if prions were in her mind. Although, if I remember, I think she may have mentioned them in an older rambling. Now, the prion theory does exist, okay? <laughs> we have crutchfield jacobs disease. We have, you're going to have to excuse me on these pronunciations too, Kuru. We have fatal familial insomnia. We have gerstmann strassler schenker disease, GSS. Those are the known TSEs uh, that affect humans. Everybody is familiar with mad cow disease. So, yes, prions do exist. It's also important to note that Jillian's notion, i.e. proteins being the infectious agent, for lack of better, should not be confused with what we know to be called amyloid diseases. Basically, it's a accumulation of misfolded proteins and diseases such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and Huntington's. This concept of an infectious protein, or a prion, was really, really highly controversial when it was first put forth. It wasn't until 1982 when Stanley Bressner was able to show that proteins can indeed be infectious. Now, for his work, um, Bressner was given the 1997 Nobel Peace Prize in Physiology and Medicine. Yeah, I really highly doubt Jillian is referring to this, but you never know. <laughs> She closes out this crazy passage with Eventually antibodies agglutinate, causing reinfection within the body. Agglutination is basically the clumping of particles. There's two primary examples in biology. There's the clumping of cells such as bacteria or red blood cells in the presence of an antibody. Okay, that's a good thing. Well, kind of a good thing. When people are given blood, like a blood transfusion of the wrong blood group, the antibodies react with the incorrectly transfused blood group, and as a result, the erythrocytes clump up and stick together causing them to agglutinate. So, in one instance, it's kind of sort of a good thing. In the second instance, it's not. Okay, getting the wrong blood is not a good thing. So, agglutination, due to its nature, is kind of a diagnostic tool. For example, it is commonly used as a method of identifying specific bacterial antigens 
and in turn the identity of such bacteria. And it also plays, agglutination also plays an important role in the typing of blood. Simply put, agglutination is useful in detecting antigen-antibody reactions. These interactions typically involve the binding of an antibody against an antigen and then further interactions between those antigen-antibody complexes with each other. Nowhere does it say in her source material antibodies agglutinate causing infection within the body. The antigen is what's causing the infection. So, simply put, for me, Jillian has no fucking clue what an antibody is or what its role in the body entails. And considering some of her recent babblings, I might have to do a post or a video just on her I'm gonna say total bastardization of antibodies. I mean, she's so far out in the left field, I don't know if I could even correct it. It's so wrong, it's deadly. Just to give you an example, here's three recent postings concerning antibodies. Now, please understand that without antibodies, our body has no means to fighting infection. In other words, COVID-19 which is her recent target, or any other foreign invader for that matter. Without antibodies, vaccines would not work. There would be no such thing as herd immunity. Yes, she's kind of sort of right in some of her rantings concerning autoimmunity. In some cases, our bodies will appear foreign to our own bodies. So you can have in certain instances where our own bodies will make antibodies against parts. In other words, it's an autoimmune disorder. Again, you know, autoimmunity, while not rare, is not common either. It's a very specific set of circumstances. And again, Jillian is taking that very specific issue of autoimmunity and generalizing it to the whole population. The citation she uses is irrelevant as it does not support her statement. One of my fellow Critics actually asked me the other day if Jillian believed that everyone has an autoimmune dis disease or disorder. And I said, pretty much. I mean, pretty much. She just uh, takes a specific and generalizes it and everybody has it. Up next is going to be Jillian's take on viruses. And just so you understand, we are still in chapter two. Now, granted, it is only 11 pages, but my sole purpose is to dispel some of her misinformation. And it's taken me this much time to do so. Her total treatise on proteins was about one typed page. And this is what? Fourth or fifth video? I don't even know anymore. I've lost track. So, yeah. This is not cool. I mean, this book is so filled with junk. And junk information. I really don't understand how the fuck it got published. I mean... Yeah, I'm I'm really disappointed with this book even being on the market. And especially under the science and medicine heading. Crazy, crazy. So with that, I bid you adieu.